My name is David Richardson. I'm an associate professor in the biology department here at SUNY New Paltz. In terms of uh, the pH uh, story at Minnewaska, it really all starts with acid rain. And over the course of the last hundred or so years, as there's been more industrialization and more industrial processes, what we end up with is um, more emissions of things into the atmosphere. So when you have coal that gets burned, uh, you have things like sulfate and nitrate that gets up in the atmosphere and then it goes through a whole bunch of atmospheric processes and it rains down as acid rain and this acidifies landscapes and in the 1970s it was really brought to the forefront where a lot of uh, scientists were finding that lakes were dead and so what was happening was at the acid rain was coming down on the landscape and acidifying lake ecosystems and it more or less kills all the organisms that are in there. Minnewaska was, at least as of the 1970s and before, very acidic. And there has been no record of fish back to 1922. The fish need a certain pH to survive. And so over five, five and a half pH, so not too acidic to survive. They need an even higher pH to actually reproduce because they lay their eggs at the bottom of the lake. And what we found was that the pH of Lake Minnewaska has actually been going up over the last 20, 25 years unexpectedly. In 2008, the park first saw that there were fish now in the lake where there hadn't been for 100 years. Uh, the first fish that they saw were golden shiners. They're a little minnow that maybe grow to about three to five inches uh, big. And these golden shiners are typically used as bait fish. And they did really well, they took off. The population went from very small, only a few fish that people were seeing, up to thousands of fish in only a few years. In 2012, the park staff first started seeing largemouth bass. We suspect that some angler, somebody who fishes, said, oh, look at this beautiful lake with all these shiners in it. Let me dump in a whole bunch of young bass and this could be a good bass fishing lake at some point in the future. What happens is when you don't have any fish and then all of a sudden you have fish in the lake, the ecosystem really changes. It's adapted to a fishless condition for 100 years and then all of a sudden things are changing. And the golden shiners actually eat the zooplankton. We call them the cows of the lake. They're little tiny guys, very small. You can barely see them with the naked eye, but they eat all the green stuff in the lake. They eat all the algae in the lake. And so all of a sudden when you have these golden shiners introduced, they're eating the stuff that eats the green stuff. And that actually has made the lake much more green. And what we saw was uh, algal blooms were happening. The, these massive growths of algae where we previously hadn't seen these before. The state park has a swimming beach uh, and they uh, operate with lifeguards and with state regulations. And so what happens is when the water transparency goes down, when it becomes harder for the lifeguards to see, then they have to close the beach because they can't see the people that may be in trouble. And so what happened was in 2011, because the lake was getting more and more green, they had to close the beach for the first time in the history of the state park. So in 2013, we saw about 15,000 golden shiners. In 2014, we didn't see one. And so all of a sudden, all the fish were gone. Big reason why is because the largemouth bass, when they get big enough, they eat fish. They're piscivores. Since 2014, we've been looking at whether or not the lake is going to recover to previous conditions now that those golden shiners are gone. And what we've been finding is that the transparency of the water, the clarity of the water is actually increasing. You used to be able to see down three to five feet. Now you can see down upwards to 20 feet to 25 feet. Um, and so the water clarity is recovering or it's going back to what it previously was.
There's a whole bunch of reasons for why we should care about these lakes. And what's going to happen is a lot of these things that we value, whether it's swimming in lakes or whether it's getting water from lakes, those types of processes are going to change over time. And so we really have to think about what's happening as well as what's going to happen to the future.